It's a planet. It's a fucking planet. All right, Nev, <laughs> welcome to the show. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what start? That is a start from a podcast. Lord, how are you, man? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm sitting in. Suddenly, it's got super sunny. So it has. It's very nice. If we to both start change. like roasting during this episode, people yeah. will know why. Well, we I've got a like very nice cup of coffee. So true. Keep you warm. It does. <laughs> Keep you going. It makes even worse. It's coffee. <laughs> That is lovely. But yeah, we're here to talk music and Nevmore and what you've got coming up. What, what a conversation, though, yeah. isn't it? What a conversation, Nevmore. Let's music. try and get the the what? whole history of Nevmore. <laughs> like you'll be here for a few days, mate. Trust me. We've you'll got be here time. for days. It's all good. We'll be here for days. We'll be here for days. We can do a part two. We can just nah, break right. it down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you've been around for a while now. About four think, years. Yeah. I yeah. think the, the first time when we did that original podcast was like the first time I met you. That was the first day we met, yeah. yeah. That was 2022. So Damn. I'd actually started making music in 2020. It was technically December 2019 where I released my first song, but we didn't drop it until 2020. So I remember the first time I sort of did music, it was just um, just writing it as a bit of a laugh at uni. So once I did most of my coursework, I just wrote music in my spare time to like hip hop instrumentals that I really enjoyed, like whatever was currently out at the time. So this was like what, 2017, like sort of 2016, 2017, I first went to uni. So it was like where it was bigger than a minute. So like Travis Scott and Kendrick just dropped down and I would write to those instrumentals and then like old hip hop instrumentals of like Nas and Jay-Z and old Kanye beats. And I'll just wrap them, like just wrap on them to keep my mind busy off outside of uni. And then I remember a couple of away days for like rugby. I'd just wrap them on the bus for a laugh and the boys would be like, oh, that's pretty good, you know, you should consider it. I was like, nah, just a bit of a laugh. And then it got to the point when, you know, 2019 rolled around, I was bored after uni, went to my first job after uni and then I still did the music outside just to keep my mind busy. And then a friend of mine said to me, you know, you should just do it, just release. So he bought this instrumental, recorded it in Ketrin in, this, in an office it wasn't actually recorded like in a studio. It was recorded in someone's office. We couldn't record normally because we were literally next door to a business meeting. Right. Any time <laughs> I would like raise my voice and stuff, they'd knock on the door and like keep it down. <laughs> so you were just in like an office or something. Yeah, it was a literal <laughs> office, like literally next door. There was like a business meeting. So as we were recording, it was like keep it down. So I couldn't actually rhyme properly. So that's why the first sort of song I made wasn't really that great, which was Summer House. That's the Summer House song I made. Because it was like when Top Boy would just come back from its revival and it was all the rage. And my mate was like, you should capitalise off that and make a song about Top Boy. <laughs> I did. And just wrote so many like puns about Top Boy. And <laughs> yeah, I didn't really, I, I did like it at the time. And as I got, as I listened to like more of my st- own stuff now, back then it was like, how times have changed since that. <laughs> Looking at me now, what we're making now, it's so much like, it is, I still do like going like back to some old stuff, but. It doesn't hit the same as it did when it first came out. I think that's a good thing, though, in a way. Like, you never want to get to a point in your sort of uh, creative journey where you then look back and you're like, I peaked. I peaked, (laughs) yeah. You're like, damn. You always want to look back and be like, okay, I'm still getting better. There's still more to do. Yeah, I'm always looking to improve myself every single year. So as we release the first track, COVID then happened. So I just graduated from university 2020, February, because I failed my dissertation in 2019, the first time round. I retook it and f- passed it. Graduated in the s- February 2020. COVID happened a month later. Yeah, I was going to say, that's... That's <laughs> perfect shit. timing, yeah. Perfect so we were literally... Or awful. Like, literally the f- last graduation before COVID, before mm, like the real world, yeah. before the world just shut down. I then was just bored, just at home going out doing the runs and stuff like going out to the shopping and stuff we need it and then i just randomly went onto discord and applied for not applied but went on this server uh funny enough it was the slow tie server um <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> well this is coming out like after the trial so hopefully Maybe it'll it's either be an even more, and it'll be an even <laughs> or it'll be like, oh, a, oh, 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 yeah, <laughs> and we shouldn't have made a big deal about no, it. <laughs> um, and that's where I met um, the first sort of people I worked with musically. So we shared a lot in common. Like, for example, the first person who I made like beats with 
not beats, but the first songs I made with, with this guy called Parkland. Uh, he's from Warrington, so he's from Manchester. We just got talking, and then we sort of said to each other, I said to him, can you just make me some beats, and I'll pay you with the money I'm, I've made from work. And he's like, yeah, cool. So he made me all these songs, made me, you think, four beats, and I liked all of them. I recorded four songs to it in Chill's NTA's basement in, in Wellingborough, in his little studio room he has in his house. Recorded it there, and we released them on Spotify like a month later. Everyone really did dug him back home and stuff. Oh, I really like this. You know, he's just good. You know, he's good to see you making music. And even to this day, that's where um, that's where Kim comes from, the song Kim, which I perform at every single gig. No matter what gig I go to, any gig I do, Kim is the first song I always perform because that's the song that I enjoy performing and it's just one of the songs I love the most of mine because it's my sort of tribute to Doom. So it's me sort of doing the Figaro sort of flow and I asked Parklin to make a Figaro type Madlib beat and he did that and it's sort of my tribute to Doom in a way so that's why I love performing Kim because it's me doing like a Doom flow with like Doom sort of bars and it's this tune that everyone just goes fucking hell he's, he's fucking good isn't he <laughs> that's why I love performing it's like fucking hell he's good isn't he you think oh what the fuck's this guy gonna perform and out of nowhere just that and it's like <laughs> this guy, you know, maybe he's good or oh, it's a bit shit, isn't he? <laughs> but which you know, is important in the first song. That's I mean. Like that's why I always do it. It's, when I perform Kim, it, the reason one of the again like I mentioned why Kim is the first song is because I want to leave a good first impression. So as I go on stage, bang, times to be changing this whole rap landscape, bang, got on like instantly like the first bar. Hopefully that catches them straight away, and that's because I want to give a, a good first impression of me going on that stage and performing. And then just performing whatever songs I enjoy the most afterwards, and then catch grabbing the crowd's attention mm. and sort of leaving that stage feeling like Good. they're impressed with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, go. so then, after all that stuff, how where are we in the timeline before uh, Welly Road? So this was still working with the Discord lot. So Parkland, me and Parkland made a second EP in 2021 uh, before that uh, a f- old friend from school who was sort of still rapping now every now and again he went to this studio in here in Northampton uh, and he I asked him where it was I was like where's the studio I said oh it's near um it's near the view near Seoul Central I was like okay cool I'll hit, he's like hit him up it's cool like they, they need like they'll like have some business so I messaged them. They said, yeah, come in this day. Time's great. Just message this guy. Said it was sorted. And I went in, met the guy at the studio, recorded. <clears throat> you know, we, we fit, we worked off really well. And he was like, yeah, like, you got some, you, this is good, you know. I said, yeah, thank you. You know, he was the engineer as well. And uh, that sort of brings me on to Leo, because that was Leo. <laughs> So that sort of brings me on to Leo. So that's, that's the first time I met Leo. Mm. So Leo is sort of like, he's my music brother, music father, I should say. <laughs> he, if it wasn't for Leo, I probably would not be sat here now. I'm being serious about that. He's the guy who sort of kept me going musically. So he was the guy who sort of, he's always, every studio session he's sort of saying, they're like, you should do this or you should do that. You should, you know, do say it like this or say it like that. And, you know, if it wasn't for Leo, I wouldn't be making all the songs I'm making now. He's sort of been the driving force behind keeping me making music. He's the driving force behind sort of keeping Nevermore mm. sort of writing and making music. So meeting him, I guess you say he did sort of change my life because he's been in my life now for four years and, I sort of haven't looked back, you know. And even during that time frame, after 2020, after stuff, from, you know, with the Discord guys and being in that Discord chat, still working with Parkland and going to, instead of going to Chills NTA's house, I'm now going to Leo's studio and now I'm making stuff with Leo. So Leo's always there and sort of giving me to say, oh, you should do it like this, do it like that. And then we started actually collaborating musically together. So we started making, you know, Thinking of Once Again, On The Block, uh, Thinking of No More, Sort of, sort of, just stuff that keeps us sort of like busy and 
buy my own stuff and then he's off to making his own stuff as well and then he sort of messaged and sort of went why don't you do lay it down which is what i do mm. sort of like every month or so which is run by leon uh shout out to leon he um said just come to one you know you enjoy it so the week before i dropped the second EP, I did the first Lay It Down show and I loved it. And I realised at that point that I need to perform more. I really need to go on stage and perform more and more and more and more. So Leon's been another one who's helped me out a lot, sort of giving my confidence on stage and stuff. And then going to Lay It Down, that's where I met Rice, that's where I met Harms, that's where I met Dead Boy, LT Quickscope, you know, sort of met everybody, so I say. So meeting those guys, sort of saying, we all sort of just hit it off the first time around. So we all, we're still, we're all sort of sound now. We're all great together. We all have great chemistry. Even when making out, out of music, we all have great chemistry. So then meeting these guys, you know, led to meeting like Moff and all these other great guys as well. And we're all still tight, you know, like Q and stuff, like meeting Hard Q, Q hosting, Lay It Down and stuff. And, Saying without Lay It Down, without Leo and all these guys, again, there would be no Nevermore. So, I th- yeah, this is interesting because I've heard I don't know Leo like too well, but the way you described him, I've heard other people describe him like that. He just seems like super supportive. Of he else. is, yeah. Even we support him as well with his own music because his own music is absolutely class. You know, he's made so much very good music over mm. the years. You know, he had North with Harms, just to name one song, uh, North. He had Text. You know, he had his album as well. And, and you know, with Leo, he's always been there to support everyone. So we, I feel like we need to sort of give that back to him because he's helped everybody else with their music. So we need to sort of do that for him. So sort of when he drops his own music, promote his, you know, get him yeah. out there i still say to this day uh leo needs to be the one who is like there as in like massively i want leo to be successful i want harms to be successful i want rice to be successful i want dead boy to be successful i want lt quickscope to be successful you know moff to be successful i want lay it down to become something fucking massive getting all these like new rappers coming in to lay it down um, just sort of, tr- sort of like gaining their confidence on stage. So they're coming in first gig they've ever done. Mm. They go and perform their own music. Um, they mm. do their thing. They, you know, their first shows. Some people at Lay It Down, you meet them and they go, okay, they seem like nice people. Sometimes y- you don't want to sort of judge first time round, first people because mm. yeah. you want to be you say like, oh yeah, that was good. You know, your first gig, good luck. You know that sort of stuff. Sometimes with some people, you watch them perform and go sort of like, okay, fair play, they're good. They have good stage presence. Or the first time around, they're like, okay, they need to work a bit more on a stage. Or sort of when they're performing a certain song and there's like not many people in the crowd, don't be too mm. sort of much energetic. Just pitch it, just know your audience. That's like, that's like my advice to people who just are starting to lay it down. Mm. Know your audience, know who's there know who you want to work with like with all your if there's like 10 people in the crowd don't act like there's you know 10 k in the room <laughs> you know be just work with that little crowd you have there like just work with that lot work with that crowd lay it down is a point with my life as mentioned with leo it's helped me out a lot when i first performed there was quite a few because it's like one of the first lay downs after covid so going to that and helping my friends support me there, it was great. And then as the years have gone on with Lay It Down, you know, more and more people have come. So when you have a room full of like 50 people, then you can sort of be like, just picture like a 5K venue, but not too much. Just know that little audience is there, get them on your side, reel them in with that first good impression. And then you'll literally have them bollo- bollocks and be like, you've got them. This is something like, this is... Mm. You now have something, and that's my advice to every person who goes let it down. Grab people by the balls, not literally, <laughs> but get their attention the first time round. Just have something that make them just go like that, like bang, snap. First bar, a beat, 
just anything that gets them immediately. Just have people by the balls and that first bit and you're away. Yeah, because I, I guess at laying it down, you're having so many new names like sort of come and go. You have... It's, it's like 20 yeah. first impressions in one Oh, night. yeah. So if you're going like 19th, then you have to be... Oh, yeah. Because like, by that point, everyone's kind of like... Tired and stuff, yeah. in the garden? Like, yeah, <laughs> so that's another thing I was mentioned as well. When there's, there's like 15, 20 people on a bill, you know, it starts at what, 8 o'clock at night, finishes mm. at like midnight. Each person has a 10-minute set. Have that 10 minutes... Yes, people will may dip, and as you as you mentioned there, Joe, just go to the smoking area. Like I do feel, I do feel bad for those people, like who who have travelled to come to this gig, and perform, and people don't take an interest. They'd rather just go outside and have a smoke, or go out the front and grab a drink, or grab a drink and not give a shit. I do feel bad for those people, but you've got to do something that literally grabs people's attention. Mm. Because you're fighting against fifteen other yeah. people. Yeah, you're literally like, in. You're literally in a twenty. Like you're literally in like a. You ought to quote. Uh, sort of quote Kendrick. It's like one v twenty or twenty v one. You know, it's literally like twenty v one. Ain't one v twenty. This is one twenty. You know, that's the thing we mentioned on Euphoria. That's literally what it is. You're literally fighting against twenty other people, and you want to prove to be the best person out of those people, or like, at least stand out. At least you want to be the one <laughs> who stands unique. out among that twenty people. Mm. Even if you're going against guys, for example, like you're going against, for example, like the veterans of Lay It Down, like Leo mm. and Harms and Rice and Q, you're going against them guys and you're fresh new, like it's your first gig you've ever done. You want to be that guy who goes, right, this is why I'm different from these guys. Mm. This is why you guys should listen to my music when I'm on stage. Yes, listen to those veterans because they're cool as fuck. You know these guys, you love these guys to death. This is why I should be considered to be on that table too. This is why I should be seated at this table with these guys. This is what I can bring. This is what I can do. And that's sort of what my first impression was when I first went. It was like, be like, have these people grab their attention and let me be at this table. Mm. And that's what my goal was the first time around. Which then comes in to what it wrote. I knew I wanted to make a project, call it Welly Road, instantly. I wanted to call it Welly Road because it resonates with me a lot more as Welly Road was a stable of my university days with the bar crawls and stuff like that. And obviously Wellingborough being my actual yeah. hometown, everyone thinks, oh, but Nevermore's from Northampton. Well, yes, Nevermore is from Northampton, but Luke is from Wellingborough. Right. So like, yeah, that's a good way of yeah. yeah so me up. as a as myself as Luke is from Wellingborough. He's from Wellingborough town, but the character of Nevermore was created in Northampton. So mm. Nevermore was, is from Northampton. It was my first social. I went to the rugby in 2017 because some of my course mates were on the rugby team. I used to see them get hammered, you know, every night, whatever. First social I went to him, it was like April 2017, towards the end of first year. And it was um, just going in, you know, what's your name? Well, oh, Luke, okay, whatever, you know, what's your, you know, what's your, how old are you? What's your, what's your stat count? <laughs> <laughs> what's your stat count? And it really is a different world. It is a different world. Oh, it's a different world. And then, you know, got accepted. And you go, okay, great, your, your nickname will be Nev. It's just simple, it's easy. And there was a guy who had a surname. He was like, oh, this guy's leaving university. He's graduating, but we need a new person in his name. Oh, he's leaving. Okay. Uh, and they were looking around going, okay, um, Nev, you'll now be the new version of this guy. So you'll, you'll right. now be Nevmore. Right. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. Fair enough. I like it, you know. And when I was sort of thinking of names for music, it was just originally Nev to start with. Like, Summer House was released as just me, it's called Nev. But then as I sort of wanted to develop and change, I was like, oh, actually, Nevmore actually does sound like a good name. I love it. It's never been used. It's never been out there. Like, fuck it, let's do it. Like, Nevmore. And it just stuck. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> and that was another reason why I chose Wellingborough Road, because of the rugby lot as well, as mentioned. Mm. So, I think it was... I said to Leo, I was like, I want to make a mixtape, but call it Welly Road. 
and I didn't because Parkland I think was just about to go to university I think and I needed a new producer to sort of make get new beats from and then I went to YouTube and found this guy called Thugs Bunny and I really liked his beats a lot and I messaged him on Instagram and I said, can I have these beats? And he was like, sure. Paid him, used the beats. And then we was like, oh, what can we have for this like album? And the vibe was just sort of like Mad Lib sort of beats and a couple of like trap beats and stuff. And, you know, Leo's on the album. Um, the Sway from a podcast I really like. This uh, wrestling podcast, he's actually one of them was actually a rapper, and he agreed to be on it. The the mm. one of the tracks. Um, there was also Ophelia Stone, who was on the Feeling, incredible vocalist. She's actually incredible. Um, and I think it was Kirsty, who was a friend of mine, who was in the Discord. She was from America, and she wanted, and she wrote a poem, which was Kirsty's interlude. And that sort of was well in the road. It was this just like a little love letter <laughs> to yeah. Northampton, I suppose. Not as in, as in the my, my stuff and time away. Yeah. And then after when he wrote, it was sort of just like, what's next? You know, you just dropped a mixtape. You've had a few plays on introducing. What's and I had? I think I had the interview as well with. I had the interview with Connor as well. I, you know, I had the interview. You know, I had the. I was the staple of one of the radio shows. Like. One of the, I was nice. the main topic, and I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. It's been the main topic of the radio show. That's pretty nuts. I had Connor, Connor Osborne message my interview and goes, um, with your album coming out, your mixtape, we'd really like to interview you. I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. A radio interview. I've never done a radio interview before. This is sort of crazy. I'm doing a radio interview. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually going to be on the radio talking about my project and talking about my music. Radio scares me, man. It's pretty mental. It's all he, the rules. Because he literally, like, he rang me on my phone, because he rang me, and he said, we're going to do it for your phone. Instead of just, like, you giving me, mm. like, voice notes, we're actually going to have a proper conversation on the phone. And that was pretty crazy, because his voice was so crystal clear because of the radio mics. Yeah. <laughs> and there was my, me, who just sounded a bit, sort of, like, a little bit distorted, because I was talking into my iPhone on the speaker. <laughs> I was on a speakerphone in my room, and... It was just like, this is nuts. I'm literally talking on the radio. This is going to be playing on the radio this weekend. And they're going to play, I think, three of my songs. They played um, they played On the Block with Leo. They played another one, I can't remember. And then they played Die Lit with Dead Boy, which is also on the album. I completely forgot about that. And that's like one of my favourite <laughs> tunes off the album. <laughs> I still perform as well. I, that's another song I actually performed today is, is Die Lit. Even without Dead Boy, if he's if he can't make it to a show, I still perform it. But I don't do it with the original instrumental. If Dead Boy's not there, if Dead Boy's not there, I'll use like another instrumental from like another artist because it will just fit with the beat. For example, I did one with a Bobby James instrumental and it fit perfectly. I did it with an Alchemist instrumental and it fit perfectly. That's what I love about sort of doing your own sort of music with, with your own beats. And then if someone can't make it, you want to make your own, a new version of it and you use... Mm. It is like an instrument that's already out yeah. there, but it works. And I love performing mm. that song as well. And then I think after the radio interview, I sort of felt like, is this sort of what's going to happen next? Can I keep this going? Can I keep being on the radio? Can I keep sending my music off to people? You know, and then I think after the radio, it was the Chronicle piece. Because I think... David Jackson did a piece about me in the Chronicle. I got mm. like a little page article about Welly Road, which is pretty crazy. Oh, yeah. Pretty crazy. Mm. Like, Shout out, David. Shout out, David. Yeah. I was pretty mental because he was like, yeah, well, thank you for the press release. I will I'll interview you. And he sent me like all these questions. And I think I came to do a, I laid it down. I looked in the paper because I just had a look if it was actually in there. And it was. <laughs> I was like, fucking hell, I'm in the paper. <laughs> Like, it's, it's not me in, like, a school photo from years ago. Like, oh, look at this school doing this, you know. <laughs> it's actually me in a paper for mm. my music. Like, it's crazy. Even though no one our age really reads a paper anymore. It's all online. But it was online. True. It's, it's weird, though, because when it happens, it's still, like, ooh. It's like people our age don't really listen to the radio either. But you still yeah. have to kind of be like, ooh. It's pretty cool. Like, 
even in the website and in the paper, it mm. was pretty cool. Like, fucking, I'm in the newspaper and I'm on an article on the actual newspaper site. And, you know, even the radio is still pretty cool. But like, oh, I'm on the radio, you know. You know, people can be like going about their day, whatever, just chilling out, listening to music on the radio. And then your song mm. pops up. Like, for example, like when I'm at work, we always have the radio on and hearing all these different songs. And you sort of thinking, like, what if that's my song on the radio? It just pumps on. Mm. It would be pretty terrifying to just do work <laughs> and then you start hearing your own voice on the radio as you're at yeah, work. I think you're going crazy at You're going mad <laughs> and, you, and you sort of just tell your boss, can you just turn that radio up two seconds? And it's your own song and it's like, oh my God, that's my song. <laughs> and your boss goes like, what the fuck? <laughs> Who is this kid? <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? Like, what is this? <laughs> yeah. well, we should probably touch on the new EP. Ah. <sighs> Yeah. In a few days, actually. Whimsical charm. Yeah. I don't know what made me go with the name. I just found it was really funny to be, like, quite whimsical and charm, like, sort of be happy. Right. So this project, this little project, I just pictured last year. So as I was finishing up Make Your Mind Up, Son, the second mixtape, I sort of needed to, like, I took a break. I was like, look. I just need a break from music. Just chill out. As the as make your mind up, as make your mind up song came out, a brand brand new job started. I got a brand new job, and I just want to take a break and just settle into this new job, make a bit of money, then go back into music after making a few few quid, and then wanted to then focus on music again with the money I've earned from work. And I was like, look, I'm not gonna do a mixtape next year. It's tight money. It's cost. I can't do a mixtape next year just to leave it on a back burner so I just thought you know what just go do an EP again do an EP year just release like an EP so I had all these different beats from Thugs Bunny again and I was like no actually I'd, I'd really like to sort of work with someone else and then obviously I had a few beats from Leo because Leo produced a couple of songs off Make Your Mind Up Son as well so I asked Leo for a couple of beats he sent me two um, one was the song One Two Stepper which is a garage track which is I loved I love that song like the hook was quite was, the first time we recorded it was in December and it didn't work at all the lyrics were completely different the bars didn't fit the song and it didn't work so Leo told me to just sort of take this new instrumental just sit with it and write to it what not came back months later back in sort of a couple of weeks ago Recorded a brand new version of it and the song worked. And that's the song that's going on the EP, One Two Stepper. The second one, Swim Swim. So he sent the, the song. I was like, okay, it's not really my sort of thing, really, because I'm more sort of chill rap. It's like alchemisty type beats. I love rapping over them. But, you know, I've rapped over Garage and Trap before, so this would be pretty fun. And I was sort of struggling to write a hook to this song. So like, what can I put here? And I think I was like listening to this other song or a, or a film or watching something. And it's, I think it was The World's End because I was just thinking, obviously that film was about yeah. pulp crawl. And I was like... It's one of my mum's favourite films. I went to go see it. I went <laughs> to go see that film in the cinema, yeah. And I was like, oh, you know, you're swimming in booze, you know. I think, I think Gary King talks about swimming in booze, I think, if I remember. I can't remember off the top of my head. I was like, you know, swim, swimming, you know. Swim, swimming. Swim swimming, you know. I only went for one. Now I'm going swim swimming. I was like, that's a pr- that'd be pretty cool to write. I had that as the hook, and I was like, I can't just keep going. I only went for one. Going swim swimming, and then it was trips on the floor and the room spin spinning. I was like, okay, cool. That's the song. Recorded the song. I knew instantly. I was like, this is the song. I've got it. I've got a song. Of, I've got a summer song here. This hopefully could be a big song for the summer. I'm praying to God it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm praying to God it is a big song for the summer because I love the song to death. Swim Swim is one of my favorite songs I've ever recorded. It's a song just simply about you've had that day at work, you all want to go to the pub. One one drink becomes two drinks, two becomes three, and then three you end up out till three in the morning in a bar or in a club trying to fucking pull someone. And then the drugs come out. That is literally the song. <laughs> that is Swim Swim. That's the sort of feel I went for. And I knew instantly, as well with Swim Swim, it needs a video. It 
instantly needs a music video for this song. And I thought to myself, well, if there's one person who's going to film a video, it's going to have to be Renaissance. <laughs> <laughs> Who you'd worked with on another video as well? Two videos. Two. So we did the first oh, time. Yeah. The first time I ever mm. met Azum was August last year. I was fresh from a Pusha T gig, and Azum, we were shooting the next day, and it was Run and Gun. That was for Lena, which was for from Making Mine Up Son, which because we I delayed the album by a month because it wasn't fully finished. So as to make up f- to make up for it, we released Lena early as a music video, and people enjoyed it. We filmed it in like two or three hours, Run and Gun, filmed it in the town centre, we filmed it by the tower. Yeah, yeah we filmed it by the tower, and. I loved it. I love working with Azum. You know, he was a sound guy, lovely guy. I we instantly just connected instantly, like straight away. And I knew instantly I need to work with this guy again. Which is what we did for Fashion Week, which is also on the EP. Uh which is the third track, I believe, on Punas, the third track. So we filmed that on Wally Road. We filmed it we filmed it here, actually as well. We filmed it here. Yeah. The second part. Which part of that music video became in the background for the podcast until recently. It did. <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah. <laughs> <Mix's coats that laughs> kind of made themselves at home for a little while. Yeah, <laughs> it was. And then we filmed that here. We filmed it on Welly Road. We filmed it at a friend of theirs house. Um, I loved it. I loved the video. We had Leo. We had Dead Boy. We had Rice. We had uh, Leon here as well for the shoot, which was great. They were in the video. They love being in the video. Swim, swim. We had all the guys again, but we didn't have Dead Boy because he was busy. So we had LT Quick Scope. We had Moff. We had uh, Lucas from the rugby with his partner Diane. We also had yeah, we had all of the usual guys, and we had Harms as well. Harms came because Harms couldn't make it to Fashion Week, so he came to Swim, swim, and he's one of the main parts of the video with Leo. They have a little scene in the video, which is really incredible. I can't wait for people to actually <laughs> see that. I can't nice. wait for people to, to when people see that clip. So because of you know having that there with Azum, I work. With, I know what Azum wants in this shot. He tells me about the shot he wants to do. We do the shot. It looks fucking great. It's Azum. It looks great. Mm-hmm. And we sort of we talk about it every now and again. Sort of what do you want to do video wise? What sort of aesthetic are you going for? What theme do you want? And we just sort of nail down the details. Like, this is what I want. Da 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 da. Cool. Gives me a price. Sound. We had to shoot the video on this day, and then it immediately hits off. Like we we just just became sort of mates instantly. Like, and I really, I every time I see Asim, I just have to just grab him, like run him, grab him. <laughs> like when I ran into him in the town centre once with all the rugby lot, I literally just ran up to him and I like jumped on him. <laughs> Like, literally jumped on him. Like, oh, my God. I did not <laughs> expect to see you tonight. Like, oh, my God. Like, this is crazy. I didn't expect to run into you tonight. I'm like, what the fuck? We just drank quite a bit that night as well, which was really fun. But, yeah, without, the same thing again. Like, without Asm, like, I wouldn't have the confidence to be in a music video. I didn't like, I didn't want to make a music video because I didn't like myself, seeing myself on camera. But then Asm sort of built my confidence up with that. So I'm quite thankful for Asm as well for that, helping me out with my confidence of being on camera and sort of being the main focus of the video. I owe a lot to him as well for that. And hopefully we can make more and more and more and more and more as well. Nice. And then... Hopefully I'll actually be able to uh, <laughs> get to one. I think I was meant to be on... You were meant to be on Swim Swim. Yeah, for sure. But I think I w- it was... Maybe not fashion. I think fashion week was before. If it was before uh, the decoys video, I think it was. I think so it. Mm, I think so. Yeah, I'm not yeah. entirely sure. Um, shout out Widow as well. Um, we but uh, your gig at Black Prince was sick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> your gig at Black Prince was sick, mate. <laughs> I loved it. Um, yeah, uh, it was sort of like. Because he would, Asim would say, look, I'm shooting your video this week. And I'm shooting weirdos with decoys, you know. 
I'm shooting mm. decoys next. And then he'd be like, now I'm shooting headshots. And then I'm going to shoot swim, swim. And after that, I was like, Jesus, dude, <laughs> you don't stop. Yeah. And then he's like, doing a, he's doing another weirdo track tomorrow as well. Crazy. Boy, don't stop. <laughs> Boy, need a break. You need a break, dude. Like, as it, it is nice to see you doing your craft and doing what you love. He does have a break. He has, you know. Yeah. <laughs> little one. He has, yeah. He has like like a day break and then comes back break. into it. Has a day break <laughs> and comes back into the game. Have a week off, dude, mm. and just chill. Have a time to yourself. But I get he loves what he does. And mm. without fair play to him, honestly. Fair play to him. Without Asim, I wouldn't have the confidence to be in the camera. Like just having to look mm. into a lens and stuff. And can you do this, Nev, and stuff? Like, okay, cool. Yeah. And again, like me and Asim, I got to meet other people as well. So. When I met Azum, he was like, when we were doing the fashion week, sort of before with the video, like way before the video, we were sort of thinking like, who can we ask to take, you know, the press photos and stuff? And that's when we asked, we asked Ella, Ella, yeah. Oh, El- oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Because Ella shot mm. the press stuff and Azum was here as well. And we started planning the video for fashion week here mm. as... Oh, Ella was shooting Ella was shooting Vince. Eli, yeah. Vince, yeah. She was shooting for Vince and me at the same mm. time. She was. She shot me first, then she shot Vince, and then as she was shooting Vince, me and Azam were here on this ta- on the pool yeah, table. That was Just such a l- random day. Literally, <laughs> we literally started planning Fashion Week on this table. We're literally planning the video on this very table at the yeah, same time. Yeah, because there's a photo of it, isn't there? I think, you guys ma- I think it was you took that photo as well. I think so. Yeah, because I I still I background. still have that photo as well. <laughs> it's one of my favorite photos because it's me and Azim look like we're at a fucking yeah. war table <laughs> discussing <laughs> like p- plotting on war. He's literally like that. It literally looks like we're plotting to like go out for war. And then there's Ella Ella and Vince in the back. Vince is like striking one of his poses for his shot. And there's Ella with like her camera. And it literally looks like we're literally planning to go to war with like this table. Because I don't even think the shoot was for Vince originally. I think she was shooting someone else and then she'd booked. Double booked. Not double booked. No, I think she'd booked two hours and then the shoot she did didn't take as long mm. or the person had to like cut it short because they had to go somewhere and then Vince was there afterwards <laughs> and then yeah it was, it was just like one of those days where I'd like un- set up for a studio high and then we'll set up the computers and then just every time we turn around a new person turned up yeah like, so oh, it was cool. like it was me because I came in first mm. and then it was uh, like she said to go up and I'll be up in a minute then Asm turned up then Vince turned up for his shoot <laughs> and then we were just like, what the fuck is going on? Why is there like so many people here? And we just haven't, and then we, me and Asim just ended up talking about the video for Fashion mm. Week. You were editing a podcast over on the, on the computer as well. Yeah. So you were editing a podcast. We were here chatting about the Fashion Week video and Ella and Vince were sh- doing like his shoots for stuff. <laughs> it was quite an eventful little day, little morning <laughs> it was pretty as well. Nice it. it was good. <laughs> <laughs> So then I suppose after that, the last track, so we've had Fashion Week, had Swim Swim, the one two stepper. The th- final track for the EP is Morning Stroll, which is produced by Griselda's Denny LaFleur. That was pretty crazy because Denny LaFleur is one of my favorite Griselda producers. He's produced a lot for Westlake Gun. Benny the Butcher, Conway, Baldy, um, and Rome Streets as well. Um, and one of my favourite beats of his is the song with Baldy James, which is Serving. And I really dug that beat. And I messaged Denny just randomly saying, hey, you know, I've just seen your story about selling beats. Can I have a look at your folder? And he said, yeah, cool. It's this much to look in my folder. So I had to pay him to look into the folder. <laughs> I had to pay him, I think it was $50 to look in the folder. So I had to pay him like 40 quid to look in the folder. And all the beats were good as well. They were like proper beats. Like pro- they weren't a joke. These are like legit beats, yeah. like his actual beats. And I picked three out. One of them was Morning Stroll. And I said, can I buy this beat? And I say to myself, please don't charge me like 10 grand. Because obviously he's quite a big producer yeah. in that scene. And he's like, okay, cool. I'll charge you... 150. I was like, fucking hell, go on then. Like, that right. shit. <laughs> 150 quid for a Griselda beat. Calm. I love that. 
The second beat I've bought, we'll talk about a bit later on. But then Morning Stroll was a song. I was like, oh, I need to write this beat. It can't be talking about weird stuff. I've got to talk about something. So Morning Stroll, it was a song talking about me just going for a morning stroll, going out, seeing the sights, what's going on. So talking about seeing these group of kids at the top of the road, prattling about, trying to act cool and stuff to impress each other. Then I sort of like dondle in my own head, like go daydreaming, thinking about, oh, you know, performing at the O2 Academies, you know, around the country, seeing a girl in the front row who's quite attractive, you know, sort of thinking like, oh, you know, she's nice, da 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 da, you know. And I ponder too much, end up in a field, like, just because I've daydreamed. <laughs> and then I come back from the walk and then see two of the children, not kids, but, like, teenagers who are at the top of the road, dead. And it's like, what the fuck happened on my walk? What the fuck did I, what did I just evade? And that will tie in to what? comes next after that EP that um, <laughs> for some reason because you mentioned about Swim Swim had the the world's end influence just you talking about that made me think you know Shaun of the Dead has like the yeah that's another thing as well yeah. yeah so that's a thing with Swim Swim as well you mentioned the world's end I mentioned the world's end I said to Asm we, I want a world's end aesthetic I want an Edgar Wright type video for Swim Swim mm. so it's sort of, sort of what we're sort of playing with here sort of like an Edgar Wright influence yeah Sort of nice. idea for having swim swim versus the world's versus end, the world. <laughs> like Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Yeah, well, it's still one of my favorite movies to this day. Is all Scott Pilgrim? It's one of my favorite movies to this day. I can, I used to be able to quote the film piece by piece. Can't Damn. do it anymore, but I used to be able to quote the film. Slack him, man. You got to give it a rewatch. Watch uh, up on your lions. Yeah, I saw. Sort of, I used to just. I remember I used to watch it religiously and just quote the film to death. But now. I'm, I'm like that with Star Wars as well. I can quote Star Wars like any bit of Star Wars. I can just quote it off the top of my head. But you know, I picked a, I picked um, I picked Edgar Wright because again, one of my favorite directors. He did the Cornet trilogy. He did Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, <laughs> so there is, there is. I suppose it is sort of Nevermore versus the world. Mm. Sort of picking that director and having him his influence on his like foreshadowing mm. that he would do in movies like the Hot Fuzz. He'd do the foreshadowing of like. Oh, no, look, catching them killers. It's just the one, actually. And there's, like, loads of them. But yeah. it turns out it's, like, the old people. Mm-hmm. And there's the one with the World's End, I think, with... They showed the flashback at the start, and they relive each flashback in the film. Right, yeah. When, like, they showed him, Weird. like, sitting on the hill watching the sunset when mm. actually watching the world burn at the end. Like, <laughs> having that sort yeah. of foreshadowing in there, that's what I wanted to do for the project as well. Sort of do that foreshadowing for this, to what's to come next, so... Having this, have the EP start on a very happy note, like, you know, Swim mm. Swim, One Two Stepper, like garage tunes. And then Fashion Week comes on, and then you'll have One Two Step, and then you have uh, Morning Stroll come on, have that ending of like, what's, what, what have I just missed after going on <laughs> a stroll for an hour? And I come back, and I see there's two teenagers like dead in the street. Like, what have I just evaded? Like, that'll be sort of the next, the next point. Chapter two, I suppose you could say. Two. <laughs> Chapter two, which is uh, October time. Hopefully, have out for October, which is more darker. So chapter two is more sort of like griselda type stuff, like the hard-hitting drum stuff, the heavy drums, like the heavy bass. So that's where the second thing with the Denny LaFleur will lead in, which is a track, which is like proper Griselda, like the proper Griselda drums, the proper Griselda type beat in the bass. That's what I've gone for for that. There's another, uh, hopefully it, it does happen, uh, another track with Black Josh after Cantana last year. I saw how old Cantana sort of did, like musically, and I wanted to work with Josh again. I spoke to him the other day and he said, yeah, let's do it again, let's work again. And... Hopefully, I'm praying to nice. God that is on the EP. <laughs> uh, by the time this comes out, he has agreed to it and he's recorded. So hopefully, yeah, another song with Black Josh. Uh, and then after EP two, I suppose it's I'm back on the grind again. So I suppose it will probably be probably will be mixtape three next year. Sick. Which will hopefully be incredible. 
In fact, I've got a concept already. You know the concept already. I do. I'm not going to spoil it. No. Save it for the next podcast. Yeah. Close Wait for the, the next time. one. Close to the time. <laughs> yeah. Then we'll talk about it. We might even do it in character. <laughs> You know, that do, it, do cool, it in actually. character <laughs> as this idea would be absolutely incredible. <laughs> we'll have a fun day with it. Oh, dude. Can't wait. I'm really excited for that one now. Same. Good wait a year. Same. I know. I know. I have to wait another whole year. <laughs> Probably literally a year to the day. But it will be literally this time mm-hmm. next year. Well, looking forward to it. Yeah. Well, the EP comes out this Friday. From yeah. When this releases. 28th, so yeah. Watch out, people. We'll yes, leave yes. a pre-save link in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go straight <laughs> over to it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for sitting down and mm, no worries coming to the studio. It's not much different to normally coming to the studio. No, it's shit, just a normal, so <laughs> it's just a normal <laughs> just time, isn't it? Just come in one. and then yeah. sort of while I'm here, sort of I kind of cool sort of doing a podcast, and I'm sat here in a CM Punk T-shirt. <laughs> so sort of I feel like he's just about to spit one of his pipe bombs. Sort of like, <laughs> hey, you know, your idea, you're the best. I'm not. I'm the best in the world. You know. Oh, man, I just, you know, I enjoy music. Anytime I make music, I feel like I can just be myself. And I love doing music. It makes me feel like me, let me express myself to the world, show the world me, show the world Nevermore, show the world what I can be, sort of be the person I want the world to see me as, sort of the guy who just not doesn't give a shit about the world, but he just wants to just get on with it, show, you know, what his night's out and that are like, how his he has sort of unsuccess with the ladies, you know, <laughs> <laughs> unsuccess with the ladies and sort of show why he can just be a bit of a, not a menace, but sort of why he can be sort of a bit of an odd one and how he can have sort of whims- whimsical charm at the same time, how he can be sort of charming. But then some people go, he's not a bit charming, is he? He's a bit of a weird guy. But that's just Nevermore. He's just he's a he's just a, a guy who just wants to just be seen as the world as someone who can do do it all and sort of say, Look, this guy grew up on wrestling, this guy grew up on Star Wars. But he wants to sort of bring those influences into his music and say, Look, I'm not Darth Vader. I'm more sort of Luke Skywalker, you know. <laughs> it's quite funny because I'm, I'm, I'm sort of named after Luke Skywalker in a way. <laughs> like Luke, Mad, yeah, yeah, pretty cool. Um, and then, you know, I'm, I want to be like CM Punk. I don't want to be like John Cena. I want to be like CM Punk. I want to be like AJ Styles. I want to be like Kenny Omega. I want to be like Kazushiro Okada. I want to be the guy. The guy who everyone sort of looks up to as this guy who can be a role model for all these other people, see what Nevermore brings and say to Nevermore, you know, I want to give that message of just be you, be that person you want to be. Don't, don't impersonate others to be what you want to be, to sort of how you want the world to see you. Don't sort of take an act that people know and use it for yourself. Just be you. Be the person you are. And share that with the world. Sick. (laughs) (laughs) What a way to end.